Let's make ourselves some x-ray vision. Hi, I'm Mike, and welcome to my channel where I like to talk about games and game design. And today, I wanted to talk about a visual effect um, that we can make in Godot. Uh, and this is x-ray vision, or just kind of seeing objects through walls. Now this will be a little bit shader based, but also there's some setup involved in uh, in the scene itself, or in the on the materials in the model. So uh, we'll start with that, and then I'll go through a couple of other uh, different styles of uh, x-ray vision that you might consider implementing in your game based on kind of what your theme is. Uh, so we'll go through the basic ones first uh, and I'll show you how to set it up uh, and then I'll tweak it so it has a more sci-fi lean to it then a more magical lean to it and then just kind of a, a more abstract kind of thing going on there. Um, you'll, you'll see when we get there. Before we get too far into it, I do want to thank GD Quest for their shader demo scenes that helped me to troubleshoot what I was doing wrong with my attempts to get it to work. And if somehow you found my channel and don't know about GD Quest, uh, especially if you're working in Godot, uh, they do a ton of great tutorials uh, on their channel, uh, which I will link down below. Let's hop into Godot and I'll show you what we're doing. So here's a scene that I'll be using. Um, I have a camera a couple of boxes and a sphere, and I've imported my bear model. Um, I've added an animation player node to it, so the bear just glides back and forth, uh, coming in and out of view uh, behind the boxes and the sphere. Uh, as you can see, without any x-ray vision, the bear is hidden when it's behind these objects, which is totally crazy and wild. All right. In all seriousness, if you've actually tried to write a rendering engine, it's actually much cooler than I just made it sound. But for most people, this is clearly how it should work because this is how it works in the physical world. So if we want to get uh, Mr. Bear here to be visible all the time, uh, the first thing we can do, um, and the, here's a little trick if you didn't know about this, is you can take the material and convert it into a shader material. Um, and then once we do that, we can make some tweaks to it. Uh, so the first thing that we'll do is that I'll adjust the render mode to not run the depth test uh, on on the bear and what that does is it the render engine will no longer um, place objects in front of the bear uh, and we'll just always be drawing all parts of Mr. Bear and as you can see uh, it's now he's now always drawn on the screen uh, it's kind of creepy a little bit janky uh, and I don't like it so this is not the final solution that we're going to go with but the basic idea here is pretty much the same. We will be disabling the the depth test for all of the fancy x-ray vision styles. And so one thing that's great about Godot's spatial material is that there's a section for a next pass already built in. So we don't have to do any extra coding in order to change the material that is being drawn on the, the model. So if we create a new shader material, uh, and to keep it simple, we'll set it up to be just a single color for uh, for the emission, not the albedo. Um, and this will be important later because we're going to turn off any light interaction with it. Uh, we can set this as the main material for Mr. Bear. And then we'll set for the next pass the previously, what was previously the main material uh, for the model. And here's where I spend a full six hours trying to get it to work. But we'll cut that out because it's not that interesting. It's a lot of Googling and trying to find answers. Turns out what the problem was is that I did not set the alpha to be one. So it was just not drawn. 
So once that's done, we ha we can see here that Mr. Bear looks the same as normal. Uh, and so when we put him back into the main, the scene with other objects, when Mr. Bear is hidden behind the, the cube or the sphere, you can now see the silhouette. And that's the basics of how to make it so you can see through objects. At this point, I want to try to push this effect even further by layering on other shader effects that we can use. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is try to go for a sci-fi feel of the game and make it look like it's a hologram or some sort of science device that's letting you see through the walls. So I was originally going to try and create the hologram shader from scratch, uh, but I ran out of time while making this video. So uh, I actually found a really good one on GodotShaders.com uh, made by Cubic Pixel. Uh, which I will link in the description below. So if you want to go check it out, uh, this is the one that I will be modifying to make work with uh, the X-ray vision. Next, we'll work on a magic x-ray vision effect. And once again, I had intended to make a quick, simple glow effect for it. Um, but since I already had the much more complex hologram shader from Cubic Pixel, I decided to mess around with it first to see if I could tweak the settings to make it look more magical. And turns out it's possible, and it looks better than I think I could do in the amount of time I had budgeted for this video. So what I ended up doing was I removed the scan line effect and uh, adjusted the flickering until it stayed solid. Also, as a side note, I don't know why, but for me, blue and green colors lean more sci-fi and oranges and yellows feel more magical. Do you feel the same way? Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, and here we have what I think is a good looking magic x-ray vision effect. Now finally, uh, and this is a weird one to describe, but this solid static texture on the screen is an idea that comes from a memory I have of an anime series I saw in the mid 2000s. Um, it was called, I think, Genkutsu, The Count of Monte Cristo where the characters were colored with a static texture, and this kind of gave it like a very psychedelic, weird style. So for example, like a character's hair would be a hair texture that didn't move as they moved, but their movement would reveal other parts of the texture. Now, I hope I've been able to find a clip of this online somewhere that I've been able to splice in here so you could see what I'm talking about, because it's very hard to describe and it's a very trippy effect. This one, I know pretty much how to do from my previous experiments with shaders. Uh, so for the shader itself, all I want is to be able to provide a texture that I can assign and then read that texture using the screen UV coordinates and set that as the albedo. And then the process is the same as before. And you get a very weird looking effect. I honestly don't know what to do with this. 
but I feel like there's something there. So if you have any ideas for how to use it, this is how you can do it. And there you have it. Uh, that was a quick exploration of several different styles of x-ray effect you can do uh, in Godot. Uh, if you found this video to be helpful, and if you've made it this far in the video, I certainly hope you have, uh, it would be great if you could leave a like on the video uh, and a leave a comment down below. If you want to see more videos from me, please consider subscribing. I've also set up a coffee page, so if you want to support the channel, and if you're able to support the channel in that way, that would be wonderful. Buy me a coffee or help me to invest further into uh, improving the production quality of the videos. That would be greatly appreciated. That's it for me for now. Uh, thanks for watching and good luck with your projects. Uh, take care of yourselves and I'll see you around next time.